tonight? Yeah, you know, for me, this game against Red Bull, you're either going to be up for it, and you're going to be a man, and you're going to roll your sleeves up and battle and fight, and or you're not. And you know, I've always believed in this team. I said it. I think it's one of the best teams I've had, um, which is saying a lot because I've had some good teams. And so this team has a real heart to it. You know, obviously we haven't won as many games as as we should have, but you know, they're pretty consistent. You know, and and. I thought they were consistent today, actually, and, uh, and even first half, I thought we played well. I mean, it's, it's never going to be a game where we have a bunch of rhythm or create a bunch of chances. And with the way that Red Bull play, um, you have no, ch no choice um, but to kind of fall into, you know, playing the way they play. You know, they press, so you got to go a little direct. Um, they go direct, so you're going to deal with first and second balls. It's, a, it's an ugly game. Um, very physical game, and uh, but we showed, I think, first half that we're we were up for it, and you know we're not going to back down in that type of game. And even though we have a lot of footballers, we have a lot of fighters too. And um, I was really proud of that that part of it. Um, I thought everything went as planned. I thought, you know, I, I expected kind of to be early in the second half, zero zero, to put Lucas in, and the only thing that didn't go as planned is they they score a goal right before I put him in, and. You know, that was a bit unlucky. You know, I have to say it. I mean, it's a 25-yard shot again. Um, but this team, you know, battled back. And I thought it was, this was the breakthrough that we, we kind of needed. You know, we've had some breakthroughs where there are draws. We come from behind. We had some good performances. We've had some wins. But, you know, I think the momentum will gain from this um, in the manner that we were that we had to come from behind late, um, I think will give us hopefully momentum in the next two games. Uh, our goal going in three games was to win our, all three. And if we can win all three, we're going to be in the playoffs. And we're going to have a lot of momentum. You know, in 2015, I was part of a team that had to win all three to get in, and we won all three and won MLS Cup. So, you know, I thought last year we won all three and missed it by a point. So, we would have made a run at it this year. You know, our goal is to take it one at a time and control what we can control. And obviously that's winning the next game now, you know, against Charlotte. Um, they're going to have a lot of confidence and motivation now because they won their, their game today. Derek Bray, you guys spark a number of times this year off the bench, obviously, against tonight. What does it say to you about him that he brings that energy when he comes in? Yeah, we kind of talked a lot about that as a staff, is how we wanted to shape up this game, obviously, the three games. Uh, we knew Wednesday that we had a, a set lineup and a set roster, so there wasn't the luxury to rotate in that game. So, you know, there were some tough decisions, um, you know, with regards to who we are going to start, but we knew that first half would be key. Um, we knew it was going to be a little ugly. Put on a lineup to deal with first and second balls, um, knowing that the game would be won in the second half. And I think having the ability to put in a Derek, to put in a Lucas, a Russ Rowe, and a Mo <coughs> um, and even shift Pedro up to the wing, I thought was was the difference for us. And we've had some other games where we didn't have that push, and I thought we had that push today that we we needed. So sometimes you game plan to win the game in the early stages. Sometimes you do it for the later stages and that was the plan. Um, Lucas, Lucas one was a tough call, but <clears throat> knowing that we had three in a week and knowing that he played 90 Portland, traveled to Armenia, played 83 minutes, traveled to Ireland, um, played 70 minutes and traveled back. And, and he got here, you know, basically Wednesday night at 11 p.m. Couldn't train Thursday because he was still recovering. Um, Friday was his only day of training, so he missed the entire prep. So. You know, our plan was basically to bring him in to win the game. And I thought he did that. You know, when you look at that second goal that he set up, that pass he played to Russ Rowe, unbelievable. So, real proud of him. Obviously, he's a guy that wants to start every game. Um, you know, but he bought into that idea. Um, he was a great team guy. He understood. And, you know, I think you saw in his performance. Um, and now, now we've got a fresh group. 
you know, in some positions to play. You know, Kucha comes back in, Lucas now fresh, Derek. Um, but, you know, Derek, again, off the bench. You know, I want to see him do it when he starts games. You know, I told him that many times. You know, he, he plays with a chip on his shoulder when he comes into games. I want to see him play with that same chip and edge to start this next game. Uh, thanks for the time, Coach. Appreciate it. Uh, they uh, mentioned after the game this is the first time any crew team has come back after being down in the 89th minute, uh, so made history there. But doing it against a team like New York, does that kind of add more to this victory and to that momentum? Because they're a very physical team. I think they had 12 or 13 fouls in the match. Uh, does that kind of push this team in even more than doing it against maybe a team that's out of the playoffs? Yeah, I think this is a very good team, Red Bull. Coach Gerard Stuber has done a great job. They have a really talented team, a bunch of young guys that work really hard. Um, you know, it's not the philosophy I enjoy, but you know, it's it works. Um, and I I admire um, how bought in their their team is in the Red Bull way, and, and it and it works. You know, um, and they've had a great season. Um, we have we've had some very good games against Red Bull. You know, we've seen them match up pretty well. You know, I think. We have a pretty good blueprint that we, we typically roll out when we play Red Bull, and um, you know we've had pretty good success overall. But it's pretty simple. You got to earn the right to play. I always say that going to Red Bull. It starts with doing the dirty little things you need to do to earn the right to play, which is battle and fight and roll your sleeves up and get kicked and roll on the ground and head out balls. You know, I mean, you can put a neck brace on every guy in the field in this type of game. It's just it's a crazy game, and our guys did that today. And I've had some teams that didn't want to do that. You know, they want to play football, and it's pretty. Um, I'm really proud of the, the group today because they they did things they don't necessarily like to do or want to do all the time. Nobody nobody wakes up out of bed and says, "I like to smash my face," you know, uh, you know, 20 times off the back of someone's head to head the ball out, you know, or, or deal with long throwings all game, or deal with direct play, or get kicked. You know, typically people don't. Maybe Aiden Morris. You know, maybe he maybe he enjoys that, wakes up, you know, looking forward to that. But very few other guys do. And you look at the, the entire group; they did that today. Um, I do want to point out Pedro Santos because I thought he was he was at another level today. I really thought he was exceptional, and he's not typically a guy in this type of game that you know wants to do all the things he did today. And he did. I thought he was unbelievable, and obviously set up the first goal uh, with a great pass. And I thought Milos and Josh were excellent today as well. Um, really rock solid. And also doing it to uh, last home match of the regular season in front of the fans for fan appreciation night. Does that add more to the victory for you? Yeah, it's key. You know, um, people may not realize it, but, you know, it hurts us when we don't win here, especially. You know, um, I've been doing this job a long time, but. I hate, I hate losing. I hate when the fans aren't happy. I hate when the fans don't think I'm doing a good job. I hate, you know, I, I take that personal. You know, I, I love this job. I love my team. You know, I, I work 12 hours a day most of the time. I give everything, my heart and soul to this club. Um, I'm all in all the time. When I pick a club, I, I don't take very many jobs. You know, I've had three jobs in my life. It's Akron and Portland and here. So. And I'm all in when I pick a job and I give everything and I sacrifice a lot. And when we don't get the job done, um, I, I look in the mirror and, and I don't feel good, you know, and I look at myself and go, I need to do this better, you know, and, you know, we care a lot and the players care a lot. And these players are on board with the coaches and the coaches are on board with them. And I think you see that through tough times, you know, and, and you see in other clubs, when the tough times hit, um, they're not on board with each other. You know, no one will ever say that, but you can see it in the play, and, and I think you see it tonight. If these guys aren't on board with me, if I'm not on board with them, we don't come from behind and pull that, you know, result out. Um, and so it's it's it makes me really proud to be able to send the supporters home happy. Um, but what I'd say is just. Just keep going, you know, and keep supporting us, keep supporting these guys. These guys, you're not going to have a group of guys that care more and believe more for the club than, you know, those guys in the locker room. You're, you're not going to find a group of guys um, that care as much as, as my guys care. Charlie, uh, Coach, with 
Cincinnati crumbling on the way here. How does that open up the final week schedule now where I think there's one point with eight and five in the rankings now and yeah. South Dakota four. Yeah, it's crazy. <clears throat> you know, weirdly in the you know, nine seasons that I've been in MLS, um, the teams I've seen it this this phenomenon. The teams that kind of and Bruce's arena has made a he should write a book on it because you know when he won his championships, most of the time they're like the fifth seed or the sixth seed, and they squeak in at the end and, and then they win it. So the teams that typically win Supporter Shield don't win it and. You know, in 2015, again, we had to win all three. We won all three and won MLS Cup. Um, obviously, when you look back on 2020, that, that team, we lost to Orlando two games to go. Everybody's, you know, this guy's falling, criticizing us. And then, you know, we, we somehow squeak in on the last day and winning that game and beat, I think we got the four seed uh, on tiebreakers to Orlando. Four seed, you know, so um, it's not bad to kind of be under pressure in the last, you know, three games of the year. Because if you can get in and win those games under pressure, you are ready for the playoffs. And so uh, I think our guys know we're not out of the woods. We got to go to Charlotte and win. Um, the other results, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, scoreboard watching this time of year. Um, everybody does it. We do it. The players do it. But I always say it doesn't fucking matter. We got to go and win the next game. Excuse my French. We got to go win the next game. It's that simple. So we'll watch the scoreboard, but it doesn't change a, a damn thing that we do. We have to go to win at Charlotte. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Coach. Thanks. Thank you. Sorry for my.